Now, one of his prominent Republican presidential rivals, the former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, is here with me in the Situation Room. Governor, thanks very much for coming in. My pleasure, uh, You're a former pro federal prosecutor, yep. a former U.S. attorney. Give us uh, your thoughts on the, the likelihood the special counsel could actually secure a conviction of Trump. Well, it's hard to say, Wolf. We haven't seen the indictment yet. And I, I've tried to be very careful about this, both on the classified documents case and also now this one. I want to see the indictment first. The key to what evidence he really has and what the basis of all this will be contained in that indictment. My sense is it'll be a speaking indictment, as we call it in the business, which provides a lot of detail so that you can really give folks a sense of what the evidence is that backs up the charges. So I think it's all speculation until we actually see what the grand jury returns, if they return something. You assume they will? I do. I don't think you sent a target letter, at least in my experience. I never sent a target letter if I was not completely sure that I had put enough in front of the grand jury for them to return an indictment. Yeah, we anticipate it could be within the next few hours or at least the next few days. That's what's going on. I want you to listen and watch what Governor Ron DeSantis told CNN about Trump receiving this target letter. Listen to this. This country is going down the road of criminalizing political differences, and I think that's wrong. I do not want to see him. I hope he doesn't get charged. I don't think it'll be good for the country. Uh, but at the same time, I've got to focus on looking forward. Would you trust uh, a President DeSantis to go ahead and enforce the rule of law? Look, uh, based on what he just said there, it gives you concerns, doesn't it? I mean, look, no one's above the law. And, and, and the fact is that What's damaging to the country, and I think this is where Ron's getting it wrong, is Donald Trump's conduct. You know, everybody was complaining about the last indictment, uh, a number of people in my party. But you can't complain about the indictment and not acknowledge that the conduct where you lie to your lawyers, where you show around classified documents regarding our intelligence activities, our military activities. Wolf, what that does is potentially put our troops at risk potentially put our intelligence officers at risk who are out there doing dangerous things around the world. It's hurting them when he does that. And what I, look, I absolutely believe, and I've said this before, I think the Hillary Clinton case should have been charged. If I were the U.S. attorney investigating that case, I would have charged it. And I think what Jim Comey and Loretta Lynch, Loretta Lynch did was wrong. But you don't fix a broken justice system by continuing to give people passes based upon whatever their political party is. You do it by enforcing the law without fear, favor, or partisanship. That's what we should be doing. And what we should be focused on here is Donald Trump's conduct. And whether or not, Wolf, that conduct is appropriate for somebody to be sitting behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office. I say it's not. Should he drop out? I don't think he should have run in the first place. But guess what? I don't care. I'm going to beat him. I want you to listen to what DeSantis said today. Uh, he said it's su suggested it's possible the FBI or DOJ, Department of Justice, could interfere with his campaign. That was the gist, I'm paraphrasing, the gist of what he said. What do you make of that? Well, I don't know what basis he has to, to draw that conclusion. Look, we don't make our country better by continuing to rumor monger things. If Ron DeSantis is concerned that there's something in his background um, that would lead to DOJ or the FBI to be looking at him. That's probably something he should talk to us all about as he's seeking the presidency. If there's some investigative steps that he thinks were inappropriate that have been taken that we don't know about right now by the FBI or DOJ against him or members of his inner circle, then he should reveal that. Otherwise, stop speculating about this stuff. A CNN analysis, this is interesting, shows donations to Trump's campaign actually spiked around his indictments, actually spiked around his indictments. How much do you think these legal troubles he's facing actually boost his campaign? Short-term gain, long-term pain. Um, in the short term, what it does is people rally around their team, Wolf, and we've seen this happen many times before. Um, when there's a crisis, you rally around your team, and that's what a lot of folks who have been supportive of Donald Trump are doing. But long-term, I think, if there are, are additional indictments to come, this is a lot of weight for anybody to be carrying around their neck um, as a general election candidate uh, for president of the United States or as a primary candidate. And I think long term, these charges are a real problem for Donald Trump because not the charges, Wolf, because of the conduct. The conduct is the problem. And so I think in the short term, people rally around the flag. In the long term, I think it's going to be a problem.
I want you to listen to what Trump said yesterday in a radio interview, said how his supporters would react if he winds up going to jail. Listen to this. Is it something that concerns you of, of you know, of the people making sure that they don't go out of their right mind if something like that happens? If that, for example, they do say Jack Smith says, OK, I'm going to put Donald Trump in jail. I think it's a very dangerous thing to mm -hmm. even talk about okay. uh, because we do have a tremendously a passionate group of voters, much more passion than they had in 2020 and much more passion than they had in 2016. I think uh, it would be very dangerous. How worried should law enforcement be about the possibility of Trump inciting more violence? Well, look, I think any time you have the history of what we saw on January 6th, Law enforcement needs to learn from that and make sure they're prepared at any of these proceedings regarding Donald Trump or any of the people who might be charged along with him, that you might have some people who might want to act out violently because of it. Um, I don't think we should be here worried about it, Wolf. Um, I spent years in law enforcement. You don't prevent crime by worrying about it. You can prevent crime by acting. And what they need to do is be prepared. And if they are, then everyone will be safe and secure, and the justice system will continue the way it should. Let's hope that happens. Uh, governor, stand by. We have more to discuss. Uh, I'm going to ask the governor about uh, the state of his presidential campaign right now, and a lot more, much more questions coming up for the governor right after a quick break. Stay with us here in the Situation Room. We're back with Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie. We're talking one-on-one -on -one right here in the Situation Room. Let's talk a little bit about what happened today up on Capitol Hill. Two IRS whistleblowers testified, alleging that, that there was uh, improper uh, interference in their investigation of Hunter Biden. Do you have any concerns about how the Hunter Biden probe has been conducted? Real concerns. I do, Wolf. Um, for a few reasons. Let's look at the objective indicators first. It should not take five years to investigate two misdemeanor tax counts and a dismissed gun charge. Um, it just shouldn't take that long. And so I have real questions about how U.S. Attorney Weiss was conducting that probe. It obviously was much broader. Where are the rest of the charges? What did he conclude? Did he really have the autonomy to make those decisions? Secondly, the dismissal of the gun charge really bothers me, Wolf, because here we are in this country where a lot of people advocate for more gun laws, yet we're not enforcing the ones we have. He lied on an application to get a gun permit, then mishandled that gun while he had it because of his own drug addiction. The fact is that that carries a, a maximum 10-year sentence under the laws. So we pass these tough laws and we don't want to enforce them. So look, I have a lot of concerns about it. Um, I, I think the reason this thing was put off, the plea, was because the judge probably has concerns about it too and wants some answers before the judge approves any plea agreement. So there's a lot of questions to be answered and I have some real concerns about it and I hope that we don't see that anybody put their thumb on the scale because that would really, really hurt our justice system even more. Yeah, we'll see what happens on that front. Let me get to some other news. Governor DeSantis uh, on CNN defended his plan for the U.S. military, which would include, and let me get your thoughts on this, he would include eliminating diversity programs, banning transgender members from serving in the U.S. military, and stop funding for programs to fight climate change. What impact do you think that would have on the U.S. military? Well, let me go in reverse. Um, I don't think climate change has anything to do with military readiness. So I would not favor something like that in trying to, what sounds to me like bootstrapping climate policy. You want to argue about climate policy, let's argue about that in Congress separate from the military. A lot of military officers say it does have a potentially a big impact on U.S. military readiness, climate change. Well, well Wolf, then let's have that debate in Congress and let's talk about it. And, and, and make it a present to the American people. I don't think we've done that. I would not ban transgender folks from the military. Um, I don't think that's a necessary uh, element of our military readiness. And on, uh, look, on all these diversity programs, my focus as president would be to make sure, first and foremost, that our military was as ready and as capable as it could be to defend the United States' interests all around the world. And I'm not quite sure how that does it. I believe, as I just said, that we shouldn't ban transgender folks. That's certainly a move that supports diversity. I don't know and I don't believe that we need all of these diversity programs, um, you know, spoon-fed to our members of the military. I think we need to ask people to be respectful of each other, 
to be respectful of the service they're providing, and to focus on the mission. Speaking of the military, I want to get your thoughts on Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama. He's continuing to block military promotions, uh, and he says he's doing that because he doesn't like the fact that the Pentagon is now paying for women in the U.S. military who want to get an abortion to travel out of state, to pay for their travel, not for the abortion, to pay for their travel. What do you think of that? I don't favor it. Um, I don't favor the uh, paying for travel to go and get an abortion someplace. I'm pro-life wolf, and I believe in things like exceptions for rape, incest, life of the mother. Um, but I don't believe that that's a good policy uh, for us to be pursuing. Um, but I also think that Senator Tuberville should find a different way to be able to uh, you know, advocate against that kind of policy rather than blocking all the military promotions. Again, the focus of the commander-in-chief will should be on making sure that our military is absolutely prepared to defend and advocate for U.S. interests around the world. I think blocking those promotions is definitely not one of the ways you make us most ready. I want to get your reaction to this new uh, New Hampshire primary poll. Very important. Uh, uh, take a look at these numbers. You can see them on the screen. You have a 10 percent favorable uh, rating uh, in this New Hampshire uh, Granite State poll. 20, 21 percent neutral. 64 percent say it's unfavorable towards you. Uh, that's not very encouraging, is it? Well, I haven't seen the poll. This is the first I've seen of it and haven't heard about it. But look, when you're out there telling the truth, Wolf, and you are pushing hard against the former incumbent president, um, in the beginning, that's going to be hard road. That's going to be uphill to do, but it needs to be done because our primary voters deserve two things. They deserve the truth. They haven't gotten it from Joe Biden. And they haven't gotten it from Donald Trump. They will get it from me. Secondly, they deserve action on the issues that they care about. And neither Joe Biden or Donald Trump have given them that either. And so, you know, these polling, uh, this polling stuff in July is, you know, uh, fine. You go with what you go with. We well, see what you see. But in the end, remember this, in July of 2015, Jeb Bush was the front runner, and Donald Trump was more than 20 points behind him. Uh, polling in January doesn't really lead to much. And by the way, I saw a poll in New Hampshire two days ago that showed me a half a point behind Ron DeSantis in third place. So I don't know what those numbers are all about, um, but uh, I'll pick the poll I like. And I like that one that shows me only a half a point behind DeSantis and the only candidate in double digits in any state or national poll other than Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump. We'll see what happens at that first Republican uh, presidential debate I'll be there. that's coming up. I'll be You're there. You're already qualified for yes, that. Yes, sir. Debate. All right, Governor, please come back. We'll continue this conversation. Thanks very much. Thank you, Wolf.